Hey, welcome back guys, it's Bob here and it looks like this is gonna be part two of a three-part series. I didn't intend it that way, but it looks like that's the way it's gonna work. You ever hit the handle on one of these puppies and get this horrendous bang like the pipes were gonna come jumping out of the walls? Well, there's a piece in here that needs attention and you gotta take care of it because you'll cause some major damage to your plumbing system. So stick around, this video is about why this thing bangs. I'll be right back. All right, we're back at the flushometer. It looks like this is turning into a flushometer series. At any rate, again, this is a Rex slash Coin Delaney flushometer. In this particular video, I'm gonna be going over the reason why when you hit this handle, you get this horrendous bang. I mean, it bangs like the water pipes are gonna come out of the wall. Now, there are two reasons you usually get a water hammer, and that's if there are no water hammer arrestors installed on the main plumbing system. But with these flushometers, the second reason is inside there is a diaphragm. There is a leather diaphragm, and they develop holes or little cuts in them over time. And the fact that they have this slit in them causes the water, the incoming water, to travel to the upper chamber quite quickly and it slams the diaphragm down and that's the bang you're getting. So with that said, let me reposition the camera. I'm gonna take the top of this flushometer off. I'm gonna show you the interior guts of this puppy and we'll talk about uh, what you're gonna be changing if you come across a big bang when you hit this handle. All right, folks, for the purpose of this video, I just want to walk you through the steps. So if you're going to remove the head of this flushometer, the water has to be shut off. It has to be shut off at the source. This is the main incoming water supply. In this particular case, this is just a cap, a cover, a decorative cover. And underneath this cover, you're going to see a little screw. And this is clockwise. You're going to shut this down clockwise all the way all the way completely until this stops. And then after you do that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to hit the handle on this. You wanna relieve the pressure inside the flushometer, get all that water just to migrate down to the bowl. And then you just wanna stay there a, a second and listen and make absolutely sure there's no incoming water. Make sure that this valve shuts. We don't wanna have a situation where there's water coming in from this valve because most of these uh, flushometers that I work on are in multifamily buildings, 20 units, 30 units. And if I can't get 100% shut down, then I have to go down to the superintendent. I have to tell him to shut down the line and we have to drain down the line. It becomes a big deal. I am not gonna take the head off of a flushometer unless I get 100% shut down in a multifamily building. Uh, that's why I carry liability insurance and uh, I don't need that headache. So. Make sure this is 100% shut before you remove the head to this flushometer. And then simply, you'll come in, this is my uh, spud wrench, it's got no teeth on it, and you'll, in a counterclockwise fashion, remove the head to the flushometer. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reposition the camera and I'm actually gonna face this flushometer towards you so you can see the inside of this flushometer. So now we're looking at the inside of a Coin Delaney Model 401-1.6 flushometer. And basically the sequence of operation would be when you, when you hit the handle, it actually moves that little plunger up. I don't know if you can see that. You see that popping up? And, and what that actually does is it, there's water in the upper chamber of the flushometer. And when you, when you knock this off its seat here, the water in the upper chamber actually goes down this hole. And as the pressure in the upper chamber goes down, the incoming water pressure pushes the diaphragm up and begins the flushing sequence. Now, depending upon what model you have, this is a 1.6, you may have a 1.28, you may have a, a 3.5. Water is gonna siphon back in through the bypass here, and these are all different sizes into the upper chamber. And as the upper chamber fills up with water, this will close back down again. And that's all done, it, it's a timed 
flush length and it's all done through this diaphragm and through this bypass and it'll close naturally it'll go down once the upper chamber fills up this will go down the pressure will equalize on both sides and the flushometer will stop running because then what happens is that this diaphragm gets pushed back down again and there is a seat in there I'll show that to you in a second so um, let me back this up. I'm going to pull this out and show you what this actually looks like. So here's a shot of the inside of the flushometer. I removed the insert and that here, this plastic, it's a plastic seat. You can equate this to a faucet seat because that's where that leather washer sits down on top of. Once the pressure gets into the upper chamber and pushes it back down again, this is what creates the seal between the leather washer and, uh, and the seat. The kind of kind of like a faucet. All right, let me get this out of the way, and let me bring up the insert. Now, this insert, again, the model we're looking at here is a Rex slash Coin Delaney 401-1.6, and the 1.6 just tells you the GPM. They come 1.6, they come 1.28, they come 3.5. Those are the older ones. Those are the ones I actually started with and and if any of these components actually break down when I started we used to go out and get the individual components because you can break this down you can you can you can unscrew this counterclockwise replace the diaphragm you could replace the plungers individually you could replace the the little seat washer here because this plunger sits down on that seat washer that's what creates the seal once the upper chamber fills up but I, I, I no longer do that. I just go out and buy the complete kit. So depending upon what model you're working on. And what I'll do is I'll leave links in the description box below for the individual uh, models. You know, 1.28, 1.6, 1.6, 3.5, depending upon which flushometer you're working on. But essentially, what happens is when you hit the handle down below, this little, this little plunger comes up, I guess you would call it. And some of the water from the upper chamber goes back down through this hole. And as the water in the upper chamber reduces, the incoming water pressure is stronger than the water in the upper chamber. And it actually pushes the, it pushes the diaphragm up off the seat. And water starts to flush. And at the same time, water starts to siphon back into the upper chamber via this little bypass here. And that depends on what model you have, depends on how fast it's going to happen. And as the upper chamber fills up with water, it, it'll actually force this back down again, and then it'll complete the flushing cycle. And it usually happens flawlessly, and it happens in such a timed fashion that there is no issue with water hammer. Again, I'm going to assume your plumbing system has water hammer arresters already installed on it. Probably a lot of them don't. But what happens is over time these rubber washers, um, excuse me, leather washers, they develop little cracks in them or little holes in them. They're actually like slits. You know, that's from the constant opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing. And they don't get dried out. They just get worn to the point where they allow water to leak back in into the top. So when you flush it and this lifts up and the upper chamber empties down and as this incoming water rushes into the body because there's a hole in this leather washer, the water just fills up so fast in the upper chamber that this thing comes down and whacks down and boom. I mean, I've heard... God, I, I thought like pipes were going to come jumping out of the wall that it, it got so loud. And, and basically, that's why it's happening. So if that happens to you, you're experiencing an issue where when you hit this handle and then you let it go, you get this horrendous bang. You're going to want to take this apart. And you're going to want to inspect this washer. Now, let me just here. I'll just show you quickly here if I can do this. These come off. And we used to, I used to go through the motions. Let me see if I can get this off here.
You can take this off. If you want to do this, you can. You can go out and buy the individual components, but you trust me, you're better off go out and going out and buying a whole kit. And this is basically what the, what the leather diaphragm looks like. And it'll develop cracks. They'll have, usually, usually right in here where you see this little indentation. That's where you, you'll see these. And sometimes you really have to look. It doesn't have to be a big hole. Trust me, because when that incoming water comes in, it'll just push up through the, through the compromised section of the diaphragm. It'll fill up the upper chamber, and, and what's going to happen, it's going to slam, it's going to slam this thing down, and you're going to get a horrendous bang. And, and basically, that's it. So if you guys are experiencing an issue where you flush this, and you're getting this, like, unbelievable bang inside of your flushometer, then it's time to replace the diaphragm. And I would recommend going out and just getting a complete kit, depending upon the, the, the model you're working on. Again, we're looking at a 1.6 here, but you want to make sure you put the appropriate kit inside the, the appropriate flushometer. And you can generally tell what flushometer you have. It usually will say on here, and I don't know if you can see this, but this says... 1.6 GPM. It says right on top here. So before you go out and get a kit, make sure you're, you're buying the appropriate replacement kit. All right, now that you got your diaphragm replaced, either by replacing the individual parts or going out and getting the appropriate kit, we're going to replace that diaphragm back in here. We're going to put the piston back in. And then we're going to put the cap back on again. We'll put a little silicone grease on here so that goes down nicely. And you want to get this caught straight because you don't want to cross thread these uh, threads here. Once you get that on there, you can snug it up with your spud wrench or your channel lock pliers without any teeth on it. We don't want to mess up the chrome. Snug that up, and then very carefully and very slowly, we're going to turn the water back on. You want to throttle the water back on very slowly, so you can turn it on very, very slowly. It's going to start to let the water in, and it'll start to flush, and it may run on until you have this open all the way. You're going to need full pressure in order for the water to work its way through the bypass up into the upper chamber. So until you get this on all the way, it's probably going to continue to run. And even in, after you get it on all the way, it may continue to run. Now, if you're in a multifamily building, you know, you got people using the water all the time, so there are fluctuations in the water uh, pressure. So you may have to stand there a minute or so before this thing completely shuts off. I've been in situations where I've been standing there for five minutes and then, you know, I've even had to go in and adjust the screw in here, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. The next video, I'm going to go over every component and how you may adjust it from the adjusting screw if uh, you find that it won't stop running. And guys, that's pretty much it. So if you're experiencing a crazy, crazy bang when you hit this handle and you let it go and it just bangs and it sounds like the pipes are going to jump out of the wall. Now you know what to do. You got to replace that diaphragm. And whether it's the Rex valve, a Sloan valve, a Zern valve, the Sloan valves, the Zern valves, they have rubber diaphragms. This is the leather diaphragm. They eventually all get compromised, guys. So uh, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I look forward to seeing everyone in the final and third series. So there you go, guys. That wasn't a difficult fix. Like the previous one, the vacuum breaker, these are relatively easy fixes. Now, in my next video, I'm going to go more in depth about the internal workings of the flushometer, reasons why it doesn't flush, reason why it continues to flush without shutting off. We'll talk about the handle. We'll talk about the adjustment screw on top, things like that. Folks, if you're getting value out of the videos, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. More importantly, hit that like button because YouTube's algorithm likes it when you hit that like button. Anyway, keep an eye out for one of these two videos here that are going to pop up to your right, my left. One of them I chose, one of them YouTube chose. I want to say thank you for stopping by the channel. I know you have choices when looking for plumbing repair videos, and I'm sure glad you stopped by my channel. I hope to see you real soon in my next video. Stay well, but most of all, happy plumbing.